The Scotland National Rugby Union team is administered by the Scottish Rugby Union. The team takes part in the annual Six Nations Championship and participates in the Rugby World Cup, which takes place every four years. As of 29 October 2018, Scotland are sixth in the World Rugby Rankings. The Scottish rugby team dates back to 1871, where they beat England in the first international rugby union match at Rayburn Place. Scotland competed in the Five Nations from the inaugural tournament in 1883, winning it 14 times outright including the last ever Five Nations in 1999 and sharing it another eight. In 2000, the competition accepted a sixth competitor, Italy, thus forming the Six Nations. Since this change, Scotland have yet to win the competition. The Rugby World Cup was introduced in 1987 and Scotland have competed in all eight competitions, the most recent being in 2015 where they were knocked out by Australia at the quarter-final stage in controversial circumstances. Their best finish came in 1991, where they lost to the All Blacks in the third-place playoff. Scotland have a strong rivalry with the English national team. They both annually compete for the Calcutta Cup. Each year, this fixture is played out as part of the Six Nations, with Scotland having last won in 2018. Topic: 1871 to 1924. Topic: The Scots issue a challenge. In December 1870 a group of Scots players issued a letter of challenge in the Scotsman and in Bell's Life in London, to play an England XX at rugby rules. The English could hardly ignore such a challenge and this led to the first ever rugby international match being played at Academical Cricket Club's ground at Rayburn Place, Edinburgh, on Monday 27 March 1871. In front of around 4,000 spectators, the Scots won the encounter by a try made by Angus Buchanan and a goal made by William Cross to a solitary try scored by England a points scoring system had not then been devised so only the goal counted towards the 1-0 score. England later got revenge by winning the return match at the Kennington Oval, London in the following year. The Calcutta Cup. The Calcutta Cup was donated to the Rugby Football Union in 1878 by the members of the short-lived Calcutta Rugby Club. The members had decided to disband. The cup was crafted from melted-down silver rupees which became available when the club's funds were withdrawn from the bank. The cup is unique in that it is competed for annually only by England and Scotland. The first Calcutta Cup match was played in 1879 and, since that time, over 100 matches have taken place. Topic. Origins of the Nations Championship In 1882 the Home Nations Championship, the forerunner of the modern Six Nations Championship was founded with Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland taking part. The Scots enjoyed occasional success in the early years, winning their first Triple Crown in 1891 and repeating the feat again in 1895, and vying with Wales for dominance in the first decade of the 20th century. Further Triple Crowns wins for Scotland followed in 1901, 1903 and 1907. However, Scotland's triumph in 1907 would be the last for 18 years as the First World War 1914 and England's dominance afterwards would deny them glory. <laughs> Home ground In 1897 land was purchased, by the SFU, at Inverleith, Edinburgh. Thus the SFU became the first of the home unions to own its own ground. The first visitors were Ireland, on 18 February 1899 Scotland 3-9 Ireland. International rugby was played at Inverleith until 1925. The SFU bought some land and built the first Murrayfield Stadium which was opened on 21 March 1925. Topic: 1925 to 1945. In 1925, Scotland already had victories over France at Inverleith 25 to 4, Wales in Swansea 24 to 14, and Ireland in Dublin 14 to 8. 
England, the Grand Slam champions of the two previous seasons were the first visitors to Murrayfield. 70,000 spectators saw the lead change hands three times before Scotland secured a 14-11 victory which gave them their first ever Five Nations Grand Slam. In 1926, Scotland became the first home nation side to defeat England at Twickenham after England had won the Grand Slam five times in eight seasons. The outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939 brought rugby union in Scotland to a halt. The SRU cancelled all arranged trial and international matches and encouraged the member clubs to carry on as best they could. Some clubs closed down, others amalgamated and carried on playing other local clubs and, sometimes, teams from the armed forces stationed in their various areas. Topic: 1946-1987. Internationals resumed in the 1946–47 season, although these were not formally recognized and no caps were awarded to participating players. In January 1946, Scotland played and defeated a strong New Zealand Armed Forces team by 11–6. Scotland resumed full international matches in February 1947, losing 22–8 to Wales at Murrayfield. The period after World War II was not a successful one for Scotland. In 1951, the Turing Springboks massacred Scotland 44-0 scoring nine tries, a then record defeat. Scotland suffered 17 successive defeats between February 1951 and February 1955, scored only 54 points in these 17 games, 11 tries, 6 conversions, and 4 penalties. The teams from 1955 to 63 were an improvement. There were no wins over England, but three of the games were drawn. Occasional wins were recorded against Wales, Ireland and France. 1964 was a good year for Scotland. New Zealand were held to a 0-0 draw, the last international match in which no points were scored. The Calcutta Cup was won 15-6, the first time since 1950 and they shared the Five Nations title in 1964 with Wales. In 1971 the SRU appointed Bill Dickinson as their head coach, after years of avoidance, as it was their belief that rugby should remain an amateur sport. He was officially designated as an advisor to the captain. Scotland were the first of the home unions to run a truly nationwide club league. This was introduced in 1973 and still flourishes today with several of the country's original clubs still very much in evidence, such as Harriets, West of Scotland, Watsonians and the famous border clubs such as Gala, Hoyk, Jed Forest, Kelso and Melrose. However the advent of professionalism saw Scotland's district championship abandoned and two super districts formed, which have resulted in the top players generally being unavailable for their clubs. These teams play in international club competitions such as the Heineken Cup and the Pro 12. On the 1st of March 1975, around 104,000 spectators watched Scotland defeat Wales 12 to 10 in a Five Nations match at Murrayfield. The attendance at the time was a world record for a rugby union match and remains the record attendance at Murrayfield. That win was part of a run of nine successive wins at Murrayfield during the 1970s for the national side, but they were unable to transfer that form out with Scotland, only managing two away wins during the decade. In 1977, Nairn McEwen succeeded Bill Dickinson as national coach. However, he was only able to win one international in his three years in charge. Nevertheless, rugby in Scotland was clearly developing. The establishment of the National Leagues in 1973-74 was beginning to bear fruit, the standard of club and district rugby was higher than ever and players were more accustomed to experiencing pressure in matches where the result really mattered. Fewer players were being selected from English clubs to represent Scotland as the domestic game was producing an adequate number of players of genuine international class for the first time since the First World War. Jim Telfer became national coach in 1980, inheriting a squad of genuine potential. In March 1982, Scotland won away in Wales for the first time in 20 years. Scotland toured Australia in July 1982 and won the first test, Scotland's first away victory against any of the big three Southern Hemisphere sides. After this, the 1983 season was a disappointment, losing their first three Five Nations matches. However, the tournament ended on a high when Scotland recorded only their second victory over England at Twickenham since 1938. Scotland then went on to draw with the All Blacks 25-25 in the late autumn. 
Scotland recovered their form in 1984 and achieved their second Grand Slam, and their first since 1925, under the captaincy of Jim Aitken. The team benefited from consistent selection 12 players took part in all four Five Nations matches, and of the 20 players used in total throughout only two played for clubs out with Scotland. Jim Telfer stood down after the Grand Slam to concentrate on his professional career as a schoolmaster. He was succeeded by his assistant, the former Hoyk fly half, Colin Telfer not a relative. He lasted just over a year, enduring a whitewash in the 1985 Five Nations, before resigning to concentrate on his business. Derek Grant was then appointed head coach, in January 1986, a trial match between Blues, players expected to feature for Scotland, and Reds. Emerging players with a possible international future resulted in a shock 41-10 win for the Reds. The Reds team included Gavin and Scott Hastings, Finlay Calder and David Sowell, all of whom who would debut for Scotland in the Five Nations that year and feature prominently for side in the years that followed. Scotland went on to share the 1986 Five Nations Championship with France, each side winning three out of their four games. The series also saw Scotland thrash England 33-6 at Murrayfield, Scotland's record win over the English, at the time one point short of Scotland's best score in any rugby union international and England's heaviest defeat in over a century. Topic: 1987-2000 Scotland went to the first World Cup, played in New Zealand and Australia in the summer of 1987. John Rutherford, the team's general and controlling influence, had injured his knee on an unauthorised tour of Bermuda. He broke down after less than a quarter of an hour of the first World Cup match against France and never played for Scotland again. Scotland had been in the lead but the match finished level. Scotland lost to New Zealand in the quarterfinal. On 27 June 1988, Ian McGeechan was appointed as head coach to succeed Derek Grant who had retired after the end of the 1988 Five Nations series. Their greatest year in the modern era was 1990, when their season came down to one game, a Grand Slam decider at Murrayfield against the Old Enemy, England. Both sides had won all their Five Nations fixtures, and England were overwhelming favourites despite being the away side. Scotland under the captaincy of prop David Sowell went on to win 13-7, and with it their third Grand Slam. The match against England in 1990 was also only the second time that Flower of Scotland was played at Murrayfield, having become Scotland's pre-match national anthem that year. The second World Cup took place in 1991 with matches shared between the five nations. Scotland won their pool, though the game against Ireland was close, and then beat Western Samoa in the quarterfinal. They lost to England in the semi-final held at Murrayfield to a Rob Andrew drop goal. In the third place playoff they were beaten by New Zealand. Scotland went through 1994 without a single win, but bounced back in 1995 to win their first three Five Nations matches. This run of wins included a 23-21 win away against France, courtesy of a last-minute try and conversion by Gavin Hastings. This was Scotland's first win in Paris since 1969. The last Five Nations match was another Grand Slam decider against England, however this time the English defeated the Scots 24-12, largely due to the kicking prowess of Rob Andrew. The third World Cup, held in South Africa, came in 1995. Pool play saw a narrow defeat by France, thanks to an injury time try, and Scotland finished second in the pool. They were eliminated in the quarterfinal against New Zealand. Scotland won the last ever Five Nations Championship in 1999 with a last minute win by Wales over England. However, in the 1999 World Cup, they suffered a quarterfinal defeat to New Zealand. 2000 2008 Scotland endured a torrid Six Nations in 2000, losing their first four straight games, but won the final game against England 19-13 under captain Andy Nicholl. Australian coach Matt Williams became the first foreigner to coach Scotland in 2003. However his tenure was both controversial and unsuccessful, marred by a string of poor results and fallouts with coaches and players. In 2004 Williams attempted to introduce a controversial, Fortress Scotland. Policy, whereby only those currently playing in Scotland were eligible to play in the national team. 
Meanwhile, the Scottish Rugby Union SRU came under new management, chief executive Phil Anderton known as Firework Phil for his pre-match entertainment spectacles was leading the way back to financial solvency and implementing major reforms to reverse the decline of the game in Scotland, but he resigned in January 2005 after his boss David McKay was forced to resign by the SRU's general committee. By April 2005, Scotland had won only three out of 17 matches under Williams. Following a review by the SRU and public criticism from several of his players, Williams was finally sacked on the 25th of April 2005. Frank Haddon, the head coach of Edinburgh Gunners, was appointed interim coach for the 2005 Summer Internationals against the Barbarians and Romania, winning both. On 15 September 2005, he was appointed national coach of the Scotland team. In the first match of the 2006 Six Nations campaign, against France, Scotland won 20 16, and this was the first time since 1999 that they had beaten France. Scotland also beat England 18 12 at home at Murrayfield to reclaim the Calcutta Cup. In the 2006 Autumn Internationals, Scotland won two of three fixtures. They convincingly beat Romania and put up a solid first-half performance against the Pacific Islanders. In the final match against Australia, Scotland failed to impress, with Australia winning 44-15. In 2007, Scotland became the first Six Nations team to lose at home to Italy, 17-37. This was Italy's biggest ever victory over Scotland, home or away. Later that year, the side travelled to France for the 2007 Rugby World Cup. They made their way through their group and reached the quarter finals, where they were knocked out by Argentina. Scotland opened their 2008 Six Nations campaign losing 27 6 to France at home. Pressure on Frank Haddon started to intensify after Scotland lost to Wales and then to Ireland. They then defeated England in the Calcutta Cup with a 15 9 victory before succumbing to Italy, avoiding the wooden spoon only on scoring difference. They then toured Argentina in the summer to play two tests against Argentina. They lost the first test 21-15, but won the second 26-14. 2009–present In a dismal 2009 Six Nations campaign, Scotland won just one match for a second consecutive year against Italy and thus, on 2 April 2009 Frank Haddon resigned as head coach of the national side. On 4 June 2009, ex-England, Edinburgh and Bath coach Andy Robinson was named head coach in time for the 2009 Autumn Internationals. Scotland's form picked up with a 23-10 victory over Fiji and a memorable 9-8 win against Australia the first win over the Wallabies for 27 years at Murrayfield. In the 2010 Six Nations Scotland lost against France, Wales and Italy before drawing with England. Against Ireland, in the final rugby match at Croke Park, Scotland gained their only win of the tournament 23-20 with a last-minute penalty by Dan Parks, denying the Irish the triple crown and assuring they themselves would avoid the wooden spoon. That summer, Scotland toured Argentina and recorded their first-ever away series victory, beating the Pumas in both tests, 24-16 and 13-9. In the Autumn Internationals of 2010, Scotland lost heavily against New Zealand before recording victories against South Africa, 21-17, and Samoa, 19-16. Scotland had a poor showing in the 2011 Six Nations, winning just one match, a 21-8 victory over Italy. In the 2011 Rugby World Cup, Scotland struggled to beat Romania 34-24 and Georgia 15-6, before losing 13-12 to Argentina. Needing a win going into their final match against England in Auckland, they led 12-3 with a quarter of the game to go, only to lose out to a Chris Ashton try, going down 16-12. This was the first time Scotland had been knocked out in the group stages of the Rugby World Cup. Scotland were terrible during the 2012 Six Nations, picking up the wooden spoon and being whitewashed, despite promising moments, and falling to 12th, Scotland's lowest ever in the IRB rankings. Even after this whitewash, Scotland defeated Australia 9-6 in the 2012 Scotland Rugby Union Tour of Australia, Fiji and Samoa. This was Scotland's first win in Australia since 1982 and the first time in 30 years that Scotland defeated Australia more than once in a row. Scotland also recorded away wins over both Fiji and Samoa. 
During Scotland's 2012 autumn tests they suffered a series of defeats, versus the All Blacks, South Africa and most notably Tonga, which caused head coach Andy Robinson to resign. Scott Johnson became interim head coach for the team in December 2012. During the 2013 Six Nations, Scotland won their matches against Italy and Ireland to finish third, their best finish in the competition since 2006. On 3 May 2013, Johnson was named the first ever director of rugby for Scotland responsible for overseeing all rugby in the nation. On 27 May 2013, it was announced that Vern Cotter would become head coach of Scotland, but the SRU had to wait until 2014 as Club Claremont failed to reach an agreement with the SRU to release Cotter a year early from his contract. Scotland had a dismal 2014 Six Nations campaign, managing only one win away in Italy, finishing second bottom and hammered 51-3 by Wales in the final match. Vern Cotter finally assumed his role as head coach, and in June of the same year Scotland won three tests against the top teams of the Americas, before being hammered by South Africa 55-6. The three autumn tests held at Murrayfield during November yielded wins over Argentina and Tonga, and a narrow defeat against New Zealand. The test against Tonga took place at Rugby Park, Kilmarnock, and was the first rugby union international to be played on an artificial surface. The 2015 Six Nations Championship ended in a whitewash for Scotland, despite optimism amongst players and supporters beforehand. However, Scotland displayed improved performances in their World Cup warm up games over the summer, with two wins over Italy and narrow defeats away in Ireland and France. Scotland played well at the 2015 Rugby World Cup in England, qualifying from their group by beating Japan, USA and Samoa, although they lost to South Africa. Scotland played Australia in the quarter-finals, and with 30 seconds remaining led 34-32. However, referee Craig Joubert then awarded the Wallabies a highly controversial penalty, later judged by the game's ruling body to be incorrect, which Bernard Foley scored to give Australia victory. Scotland lost their first two games in the 2016 Six Nations Championship, extending their losing streak in the Six Nations to nine matches, their worst run in the championship since the 1950s. The Scots finally ended their losing run with a 36 to 20 win over Italy in Rome. John Barkley, John Hardy, and Tommy Seymour all scoring tries. Scotland followed that win up with a victory over France at Murrayfield. Stuart Hogg, Duncan Taylor, and Tim Visser scoring tries in a 29 to 18 win. It was Scotland's first victory over France since 2006, and also ended a 10 match losing streak against Les Blues. Scotland had a successful tour of Japan in June, winning both test matches, and during the autumn internationals recorded a third consecutive win against Argentina, their seventh recognised win overall against the Pumas. In the 2017 Six Nations, Scotland saw a marked improvement in performance with three home wins and two away defeats. This was Vern Cotter's last tournament as head coach of Scotland, despite their also beating Australia 24 to 19 on the summer tour of the Southern Hemisphere. In their first six ends game, Scotland went in with confidence to win their first opening match for 11 years against Ireland in a close match at Murrayfield Stadium. This followed with a defeat in Paris to France. Scotland secured a win over Wales in their third game, Scotland's first since 2007. In the eagerly anticipated Calcutta Cup tie against England at Twickenham, however, Scotland were thrashed 61-21. This was a record defeat against the English, and a result which ended their hopes of winning the Six Nations. In the last week, Scotland defeated Italy at Murrayfield with a 29-0 victory, securing fourth place in the tournament table. Gregor Townsend took over as head coach in June 2017. His first fixture as head coach was against Italy in Singapore where Scotland won 34-13. A week later Scotland defeated Australia 24-19 in Sydney, the second time in a row Scotland had won on Australian soil. The victory was made more notable by the list of absentees, such as Stuart Hogg and Grieg Laidlaw, who were in New Zealand on Lions duty. The tour was concluded by a 27-22 loss to Fiji and Suva. Victory over Samoa in November 2017 was followed by a breathtaking performance against New Zealand at a sold-out Murrayfield. Tries from Johnny Gray and Hugh Jones brought Scotland to 17-22 with barely a minute to go, but it took a superb cover tackle from the All Blacks fly-half Bowden Barrett to prevent Stuart Hogg from scoring a winning try. A week later Scotland registered a record win over the Wallabies, inflicting eight tries on the visitors in what was the Australian hooker Stephen Moore's final international game. 
Scotland won 53–24, their biggest ever margin of victory over Australia. Thistle and the anthem The thistle is the national flower, and also the symbol of the Scotland national rugby union team. According to legend the ''Guardian Thistle'' has played its part in the defence of Scotland against a night attack by Norwegian Vikings, one of whom let out a yell of pain when he stepped barefoot on a thistle, alerting the Scottish defenders. The Latin nemo me impunely case it, ''No one provokes me with impunity.'' In English is an ancient motto of the kings of Scotland, and also of Scotland's premier chivalric order, the most ancient and most noble order of the thistle, and of the Scots guards the latter both belonging to the monarch. Flower of Scotland has been used since 1990 as Scotland's unofficial national anthem. It was written by Roy Williamson of the Corries in 1967, and adopted by the SRU to replace God Save the Queen. In the first year of using Flower of Scotland, as an anthem, Scotland walked onto the pitch at the beginning of the Five Nations Championship deciding match against England. This combination was explosive and Scotland went on to beat England 13-7 and win the Five Nations Championship with a grand slam. Strip Scotland have traditionally worn navy blue jerseys, white shorts and blue socks. On the occasion that Scotland is the home side and the opposing team normally wears dark colours, Scotland will use its change strip. Traditionally this is a white jersey with navy blue shorts and socks. For a brief period, when Cotton Oxford were the shirt sponsors, the white shirt was replaced by a bright orange one with orange and blue hoops on the sleeves. This was first used against the New Zealand Maori on 14 November 1998. This change strip was replaced by the traditional white one just two years later. Also during this sponsorship deal, purple was introduced to the traditional blue jersey. This was a significant departure from the traditional colors of blue and white, although purple is inspired from the thistle flower. <laughs> Kit manufacturers and shirt sponsors In September 1993, a sponsorship deal was announced with the famous Grouse, resulting in a sponsor's name being added to Scottish International Players' Kit for the first time in addition to the jersey manufacturer's emblem. In 1997 a new deal saw the Grouse logo appear on the Scotland jersey. Further deals followed and it became the longest association with a sponsor in world rugby. During this time, when Scotland played test matches in France, the famous Grouse logo was replaced by the initials. TFG due to the Evin law that bans any alcohol advertisement including in sports events in France in May 2007 after 17 years the famous grouse ended its shirt sponsorship with the team the famous grouse did maintain a low profile link to the Scottish rugby union by becoming the main spirit sponsor this deal is thought to be worth a tenth of the original cost and forbids the Scottish rugby union from affiliating itself from any other whiskey manufacturer on 3 September 2007 it was announced that the then Rangers chairman Sir David Murray's company would become the new shirt sponsor, in a deal worth £2.7 million over three years. In August 2011, the Royal Bank of Scotland took over as main sponsors of Scottish rugby, after Sir David Murray's company decided to end their sponsorship. BT became the primary shirt sponsor as part of the £20 million deal signed in 2014. Between the 2007 Rugby World Cup warm-up games and the 2013 South African Quadrangular Tournament, the fonts used for their number kit on the back of their kits were Krilly Extra Bold Italic. But since Macron took over as kit supplier, the number fonts on the back of their kits were Aerial Rounded MT Bold or Oswald Bold, during the 2015 Rugby World Cup. Record. Six nations Scotland competes annually in the Six Nations Championship, which is played against five other European nations, France, England, Ireland, Italy and Wales. 
The Six Nations started out as the Home Nations Championship in 1883, with Scotland sharing the championship with England in 1886 before winning the title outright for the first time a year later. Scotland have won the title outright 15 times and shared the championship a further nine times. Scotland have won three Grand Slams including the Triple Crown in 1925, 1984 and 1990, in addition to a further seven Triple Crowns. They also contest the Calcutta Cup with England as part of the championship. Scotland were the winners of the last five nations in 1999, before Italy joined the competition to make it the six nations. Trophies within the Six Nations The Triple Crown is awarded to the Scotland, England, Ireland or Wales national side if they can beat the other three home nation sides in the Six Nations tournament of that year. The Calcutta Cup is awarded to the winner of the Scotland-England match in the Six Nations tournament. Scotland is the current holder. The Centenary Quake is awarded to the winner of the Scotland-Ireland match in the Six Nations tournament. The Ald Alliance Trophy is awarded to the winner of the Scotland-France match in the Six Nations tournament. Scotland is the current holder. Beating all the sides in the Six Nations is called a Grand Slam but this has no trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Individual trophies The Hope Toon Cup is awarded to the winner of Scotland-Australia test matches. Scotland is the current holder. The Douglas Horne Trophy is awarded to the winner of Scotland, Canada Test Matches. Scotland is the current holder. Since 2018, the Dottie Weir Cup is awarded to the winner of Scotland, Wales Test Matches. Wales is the current holder. <laughs> World Cup Scotland has competed in every Rugby World Cup since the inaugural tournament in 1987. Their best finish was fourth in 1991. In their semi-final on 26 October 1991 Scotland lost 6–9 to England at Murrayfield after Gavin Hastings missed a penalty almost in front of and a short distance from the posts. On 30 October Scotland lost the third-place playoff to New Zealand in Cardiff 13–6. Since then they have qualified for the quarter-finals in all but one occasion, in 2011. Their most recent World Cup campaign in 2015 saw them come within 30 seconds of a famous win over Australia, however a last-minute penalty sealed the win for the Wallabies. <laughs> Overall Scotland achieved 100 points for the first time in defeating a young and inexperienced Japan side 100–8 on 13 November 2004. The previous record had been 89–0 against Côte d'Ivoire in the first round of Rugby World Cup 1995. The game versus Japan was played at the home of St Johnston FC, McDermott Park, Perth. It was the first time that Scotland had ever played north of the fourth i.e. the Firth of Forth, in the Caledonian region. In the same game Chris Patterson moved ahead of Andy Irvine in the list of Scotland's all-time points scorers, below is table of the representative rugby matches played by a Scotland national 15 at test level up until 24 November 2018. <laughs> Players Topic. Current squad On 17 October 2018, Gregor Townsend named a 40 man squad for the 2018 Autumn Internationals. On 29 October, Sam Johnson, Magnus Bradbury, David Denton, and Luke Crosby, who had been training with the squad, all withdrew from the squad with injury and were replaced by James Lang and Darcy Graham. On 5 November, Blade Thompson and Lang withdrew from the squad with injury, while Ross Ford, Henry Piergos, and Dougie Fife were released back to their clubs. Adam Ash, Scott Cummings, Nick Grigg, Stuart Hogg, Josh Strauss and Duncan Weir were called up to the squad as replacements, with Hogg returning from his recuperation after an ankle operation. On 12 November, Gary Graham was called up to the squad as an injury replacement. Caps updated, 16 November 2018 Head coach, Gregor Townsend.